Hello, everybody. So I'm a product designer, and I fail a lot, too. Uh, I have put buttons unintentionally where people can't find them. I've written lines of copy that people don't understand. And this is important for you, because I've worked on things like Gmail, that you have to deal with these mistakes. Not so excited about failure, huh? <laughs> but I don't want to talk about what failure looks like today, because I think it's pretty obvious when stuff goes wrong. I want to talk about my relationship to failure and our relationship to failure. I got my first taste of that, I think, on my very first design project. It was in 2001, and we were trying to understand how people use the web. Uh, we wanted to visualize the way people browse. What pages did they go to? Where did they go to next? So visualization. And I told my manager at the time, I said, I got this. And I sat down, and I sketched, and I sketched. And people came over, and I said, it's not done yet. Go away. And then I prototyped, and I worked for three months on this thing. And when it was finally done, I brought everyone into a conference room to show them my masterpiece. I put it up on the slide projector. Come on, slide, yeah. And so the web pages were like skyscrapers, and the traffic between the sites were like these airplanes that were moving through cities. And if you're confused about what this was like, so was everyone in the conference room. <laughs> it was really bad. But um, I, was, I was surprised, because I didn't understand how this thing that made so much sense to me didn't make sense to the people in the room. Like, how did that happen? Well. So this happens so often in design that we actually have a term for it. It's called design blindness. And what it means is that when an idea comes out of your head, well, that idea makes sense to your head. But it might not make sense to other people. And the upshot of that is when you create something, you're instantly the worst person in the world <laughs> to tell whether that thing actually makes sense to anyone. So as a young designer, I was failing a lot. And I needed to get around this design blindness issue. So what I learned. And what I think a lot of designers learn is that you have to get critique early and often. You have to show your work to people before you think it's done. And only by showing it to people do you actually know if it's any good. That sounds pretty easy. That's really hard. Because when you've got this thing that's not done, you, there's so much stuff that you, you know is wrong with it. And you're afraid that if you show it to someone, they're just going to poke holes all over the place in it. And so you have to be open to failure. You have to be really vulnerable. But that's what I did. I started showing my designs to other designers to get around design blindness. I showed it to engineers. Sometimes it involved a beer when the feedback wasn't so great. Uh, I would show it to execs, totally half-baked. I would show it to the whole team. And I found that all this stuff made it a lot easier to build products. There were still surprises, but they were tiny surprises. <laughs> they were the types of surprises that you could incorporate into your design. It was the type of feedback that, because you didn't fall in love with your design, that you could shape the product over time and build better products. So this is how I work today. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at it. And I'm in our design studio about a month ago, just kind of sketching for some stuff I was doing for a startup. My colleague, Jake, comes over. And he looks at it and he goes, oh, you should show that to some users tomorrow. And I'm like, Jake, you're insane. I'm, there's no way that I'm done yet. I've got about two weeks of design work. I have to storyboard. I have to do all this stuff before we're ready to show it to users. And the minute I heard myself say, it's not done yet, I knew I should probably give it a try. So they go, Jake, he set up some user studies. So we call some people to come into our office the next day. So now we have to compress about two weeks of design work down into one day, which turns out is really hard. Uh, so we like, laid out all of my sketches on the table, and we got out a laptop, and we just started building a prototype as quickly as we could. But it, it wasn't going very well. Like The copy wasn't good. The layout wasn't good. I was just not happy with it. And I, I sort of felt like we were going to waste a whole day showing this thing that didn't work to people. But we went, I went to bed and woke up the next morning, and this woman comes in for the very first user study, and she, she looks at the UI, and she points at this thing that I know is totally broken. She points at it, and then she totally understands it, and she values it, and that's the, her favorite thing about the whole UI. And in fact, there was other stuff in there that, that she didn't understand. That totally surprised me. I mean, this little study that we ran had so many surprises in it. And it helped us build a better product. But for me, the biggest surprise was that after years and years of, of trying to get good at showing stuff before it was ready, it was still hard for me. So the thing that I'm still working on is being open to failure and showing my work before I think it's ready. Because when I do that, I get to see through other people's eyes. And I get the gift of feedback from them. And all that stuff means that I can build better products. So that's how I escaped design blindness. And now, I hope you can too. Thanks.